Let's go. Hello and welcome to the R of Reach Revive. My name is Evan White and I will be taking you through this and all of the course material in this program. Let's get started. Revive is where we will breathe new life into your board, committees, town halls, digital media, marketing campaigns, and your overall outreach efforts for your neighborhood. We will be starting with an outreach audit where we assess what your neighborhood organization is currently doing to engage within your community. We will identify areas that can be approved and be creating a tailored outreach plan for you to use moving forward. Revive is all about setting the roadmap for success. But before we dive in, just a bit of housekeeping first. If you haven't done so already, please fill out the form linked in the pre-course materials video. This will give me the 411 on where you are starting. This form has areas for you to fill in with some of your info on yourself, your neighborhood council, your URLs, social media links, that type of thing. This information you supply will help me better understand the place in which your organization is starting and allow me to set the stage for our first one-on-one -on -one calls moving forward. Ready to begin? Okay, let's do this. My family and I live in Venice and we've been here just about a decade now. I've been very active in the Venice Chamber of Commerce for the past six years, as well as the Venice Neighborhood Council for the past seven. Now, the VNC is historically one of the most engaged neighborhood councils in the roughly 100 throughout the city of Los Angeles. And I am lucky enough to have the opportunity to be around the institutional knowledge held within our president, parliamentarian, treasurer, and vice president, among others. But I will say, when I joined the Venice Neighborhood Council, I inherited an old laptop an older video camera, and a tripod held together with duct tape. The email list was basically on paper. We had two fax machines and a WordPress website that, let's just say, it had a lot going on. The organization was not using social media to its fullest, and they were wasting time and energy in areas that just didn't make sense. As a marketing professional, I knew we had a lot of work ahead of us to get the organization caught up and communicating online using the best practices available. But I also knew that I needed to take stock in what our board was really good at. Back to that institutional knowledge. Another R word for reach could be recognize, because you need to come into recognition of what you're doing well as a board to truly set the stage. So here's your first question. On a scale of one to 10, where is your board at with your current outreach? Is your board operating at a four, maybe a seven, how would you rate your own outreach efforts? Ready, go. Start thinking, open an email, send me your number. When I was elected to the communications chair for the Venice Neighborhood Council, I inherited a treasurer who had served many previous years, a president who'd been involved since nearly the inception of the Neighborhood Council system, a parliamentarian that has worked closely with the city hall for over a decade, and a VP that is a pro at running meetings. Social media wasn't being leveraged. Our email tools were old school. The organization's logo was 17 years old, but we had a well-oiled machine when it came to the operations and overall board proficiencies. We had some things that needed attention, but we also have some very good things going for us. When I took an audit of the VNC's outreach efforts in 2013, I learned that our events were the most significant driver to new impressions for our neighborhood. I also learned that the longevity of some of our key stakeholders was an incredible foundation to build on. No one starts at a zero. You're all doing something right. You're probably doing more than just one thing right. We need to identify what those things are so we can build from your truth. Now, a town hall event was my first introduction to the neighborhood councils back in the fall of 2011. Since that tech town hall, the VNC has held dozens of town hall events, including Clean Tech, Green Earth Day, beach cleanups, family festivals, cannabis town hall events, Vexit meetings, and last summer, we held our first Hoot Nanny. We tripled down on event marketing and activations within the community because we identified that events were one of the ways we were best engaging with our neighborhood. When we created a platform for people to speak and be educated about the laws around the cannabis industry, people showed up. When we host a barbecue, people turn out. When we talked about what it would be like to leave the city of LA, local news even turned out. Check it out. 
Welcome to Venice Beach, where locals call themselves Venetians. People will more quickly say they're Venetian than they are Los Angelino. I say that. But technically, even decade-long Venice Beach local Holly Stenson is an Angelino because Venice Beach is part of L.A., but that may not be forever. Stenson, who's also on the Venice Beach Neighborhood Council, says the group is holding a town hall to talk about the potential of Venice Beach breaking away from L.A. and becoming its own city. Now, I'm not suggesting your neighborhood leave the city or anything. Thing, but it was a very engaging conversation. And that is what this is all about. Creating a space for engaging conversations to happen. Getting the word out in advance and watching the community come together in the space that we've created. Question number two. What is the biggest obstacle your committee or board is dealing with when it comes to outreach and communications for your neighborhood? Think about it. Be serious with yourself and add that to the email that you're sending me. We all have obstacles. It's just a matter of thinking them through and getting over them. General voter apathy is an example of a roadblock that I hear a lot of neighborhood councils talking about. You hurdle this one by finding what sparks interest at the local level, street by street, and throttling up on that. The Vexit conversation really struck a nerve with many of the people that live, work, and own property right here in Venice. What would it be like if Venice could become its own city again? That hasn't happened in about 100 years. But we asked people the question, and they responded. Some of our constituents loved the ideas. Others hated it. But the point of the matter is, people engaged. That's right, Mark and Michelle. A community group tonight held a meeting. It was purely informational, just so people could get a sense of what it would be like to secede. And the reviews were pretty mixed. From people who know Venice best, there are mixed reviews over Vexit. I think it's doable. I would say I'm a no. Now I'm all for it. A great way to find and ignite an interest spark in your neighborhood is by connecting with local schools or churches or libraries or old folks' homes or the Chamber of Commerce in your area. Or walk into one of the big office buildings or local organizations that have lots of people with shared interests. Does your community predominantly speak a language other than English? Start having meetings in just that language. Bring in interpreters to translate from that language to English for everybody else. Do you have a college or a high school within your boundaries? Invite them to participate. Amend your bylaws to include them. Follow-up questions. When was your last town hall? How many people showed up? Take some time, pause this video, write it down, and let's talk about it in our next one-on-one. -on -one. For me, our last event was a CERT training, Community Emergency Response Team. It was all about emergency preparedness. The event took place over two weekends and roughly 100 people attended in total. I mean, 100 people is a good number when it comes to training community emergency response teams, but I would love to see even more. So something that our board is working on implementing for our next CERT training is for all of the second time trainers to invite a friend. The folks that showed up for the initial event are already active and engaged neighbors that want this training, asking them to tap a friend that shares the same feelings and desires is the best way to grow. Next question. During the past election, how many people ran for a seat on your board? How many people voted in your last election? How about the previous election? Do you even know? All of this information lives on the city clerk's website. They also have a pretty cool funding tool where you can see what all of the 90-some neighborhood council's budgets look like, track where they're spending it, and you get a good idea of where these millions of dollars are going. Knowing where your board and other neighborhood councils are spending their allocated budgets will help identify where these resources of time and energy are working and where those resources are leaking. We need to identify where your spending is resulting in new and engaged constituents, where it is just evaporating and going into the ether, or whether or not these budgets are even being spent. How has your neighborhood council historically spent your budget? This is not a rhetorical question. Go look it up. Join your budget committee. Follow the dollars. Everything you're spending on, in my opinion, should in some way be tied to outreach. Everything you do should be trying to get more people to know about your organization. Now, whether we like it or not, it's on each neighborhood council to do the majority of their own outreach for their board elections. Remember. There are 4 million people that live in Los Angeles, and roughly 40,000 people in each of the almost 100 neighborhood councils. 
I believe that neighborhood councils should be planning for election-related town halls consistently now through next summer. Why not start an election committee today? If you are unhappy with the total number of voters in your last election, you can do something about it. If your neighborhood council's total focus now through the next election were voter turnout, it would be a worthwhile cause. Why not set the goal to have twice as many people vote in your next election? Or better yet, twice as many people run. In the last Venice Neighborhood Council election, we had nearly 2,000 voters. And our goal for the next election is to break the 3,000 mark. We also had over 70 candidates running for the 21 board seats. When it comes to neighborhood council elections and creating a real reason to get people to vote, it's all about the number of people running and making sure that they each get 100 of their friends, coworkers, and neighbors to come out and vote for them. In our next election, my goal for the VNC is to have 100 candidates across the ballot. Next question. Are you maximizing committee efforts? Short answer, probably not, but we can fix that. I know it's boring, but you should read and know your mission statements. If you don't know what your mission statements are, both your general board and your outreach or communications committees, go find them. Now, this isn't necessarily shaming you, but seriously, I strongly recommend that you go and find them right now. Knowing the mission and really understanding it will help your organization start to identify where you are currently allocating your resources, time, and energy, and it will help you identify if this energy being spent is aligned with those missions. An excellent way to stay on target here is to print out your bylaws and mission statements, print a copy for everyone at your next outreach committee meeting, drop some highlighters on the table, and check in on what you're doing in real life, online, and at your meetings that align with what's in the paperwork in front of you. Next, you will need to make sure that your social outreach is mirroring your mission statements. Here is a list of some of the top social media platforms that your neighborhood organization should be using. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Vimeo, Snapchat, TikTok, LinkedIn, Eventbrite, and that's not. Now I know it might sound daunting, but we're trying to put your brand, your organization, in front of people. And we need to go where they are. People are spending two plus hours on their phones every day. And a lot of those people are on the apps that I just listed above. Now you don't need to be posting on these places every single day, but if you want to, there are scheduling tools that can help. Apps like Sprout and Later allow cross-platform posting and scheduling at varying fees. When it comes to these social media platforms, I've used them all in various ways for myself, clients, the Chamber of Commerce, and the Venice Neighborhood Council. I'll be releasing bonus videos with more ideas on how to use each of these platforms in new ways, but here are a few. Now, Facebook has a handful of features that will help revive your page nearly instantly. Now, Facebook events are a great way to make your audience know that you're having meetings and town halls. It's best to create a new Facebook event for each of your meetings and town halls as soon as you have the dates, times, and venues locked in. This way, people can start to plan on attending. Facebook Live is also an excellent place for your meetings live video coverage, for your town halls, for your meetings, for your activations. I highly recommend that your organization invest in a Mevo camera. It is a tiny, super cool little camera, and it will make your live streaming for meetings easy and engaging. Now make sure your meeting locations have Wi-Fi. If they don't, put a Wi-Fi hotspot on your next budget as well, because you will need one. Sharing live video coverage will revive your Facebook page the first time you do it, and it will reignite your audience every time you go live. More info in the homework material section, but you should know that the Facebook algorithms love video, they love live video even more, and this means your current audience, the people who like your page, will get a message immediately when you go live. This will build a network effect around your page and your video, sharing it to everyone. Now, Twitter is a great place for interactions with local media and local officials. I suggest you adopt the mentality that the more local accounts you follow, the better. Follow MCCommsU and look at our followers and the people we follow. Then follow them all, or at least some of them. Twitter is personally by far my favorite social media platform. Maybe it's because I have a verified account I've been on the platform for years and I've tweeted some insane number of times. But I also really enjoy the real-time nature of it all. Living in Los Angeles, it is wild to feel an earthquake and then quickly jump on Twitter and tell people where I felt it, where I am, how big I thought it was. 
Twitter is super fun for LA Rain as well, and I highly recommend you get in on it. Instagram is all about images, and if you're not a photographer, it might be scary. So here's some homework. When you speak to Dunn next, ask them for your Canva.com Pro login credentials. Canva is a fantastic web tool that will help people of all skill sets create good-looking digital images. One of the fun ways Venice uses Instagram is around the Venice Chamber's trademarked Venice sign, reposting some of the amazing photos from tourists and locals alike. During the 2019 Neighborhood Council elections, the VNC used Instagram to post memes around the hashtag RepYourVenice. YouTube is the world's largest video library and a place where people go to learn. I suggest your board create, and that might mean pay for, a nice 90 second or two minute long video all about your neighborhood, your council, and some of the things you love about what you do. This way, you'll have what I call a hero video on YouTube for anyone looking for information in and about your neighborhood. We can talk about more content for YouTube on our one-on-one -on -one calls, but for a baseline, you should have a single piece of well-produced informational content. You imagine the content, and I will introduce you to the production team that can take it from there. Vimeo is a pretty, more professional, artsy version of YouTube. So you'd never see stuff like the Numa Numa guy over there. For our purposes, you will need a Vimeo account for the Mevo Live Video Camera software. And Vimeo is a great place for your hero video as well. Vimeo is also an excellent place for press B-roll. When you are creating your hero video, also capture 10 to 15 minutes of B-roll for press pitching. Now Snapchat is not an app that I use, but I get it, tons of people do. Snapchat has a cool feature called GeoFilter, where you can submit a request for fun stickers and in-app interactions to happen at public places in your community, like parks, cities, neighborhoods, and more. Imagine your next neighborhood hootenanny with a branded Snap sticker. Now TikTok is the current rocket ship in the social media world. It is also the youngest startup on the list, but it's growing by millions a day. The audience is young, very young, but that's okay. And a good TikTok campaign could really tap into your local high school segment for your neighborhood. If you do go in this direction, make sure you have a place for these kids when they come to join your organization. An idea for your first post could be a do you know type of content, where a video with trivia about your neighborhood, cool, fast cuts, or a year in review for 2019, where every month since your last election, there's a blip of a few seconds on a 20 second clip. Now LinkedIn is the only social media platform that my mom is on, and also the only one that she was on before me. For your organization, your LinkedIn page should be set up like a business or an organization page with the president at email account. Once the org page is set up, glossy with nice new profile image, properly filled out bio section, ask every one of your members to edit their own personal LinkedIn page to show that they have a connection to your organization. Eventbrite is another great place to find people that are actually looking for events to attend in your given area, zip code, neighborhood, city, etc. The app is all about events, only events, and it knows the types of events that its users like. So, you need to use this to your advantage and start listing your town halls on Eventbrite. You can use the same image and copy that you're using on Facebook, and Facebook even has a place for a link to your Eventbrite on your RSVP page. Making this link is a great way to start acquiring data about the people that attend your events, and you can use those in the email newsletter campaigns as well. Eventbrite adds another step, but the work builds on itself and your events will grow over time. Next on the revive train is your website, which probably needs to be updated, but good news, we can do that pretty quickly. In 2020, a mobile-friendly website is critical. While it feels like we're on our phones 100% of the day, the data shows that about 50% of web traffic is taking place on mobile phones. So, if your site is not optimized to look good and work perfectly on mobile, you are losing countless opportunities to engage with people that are looking for you. When I joined the Venice Neighborhood Council as the communications officer, our website was atrocious. I was new to the board and I didn't know exactly the steps to take to launch a new website. But I learned them, I took the time to vet the would-be vendors because we needed it. After talking with about a dozen vendors that had been pre-approved by the city of LA, we selected the web corner to build the VeniceNC.org website. I highly recommend them. They built a platform for community organizations to use that is a front end that looks good and is mobile friendly. And it also has a back end where board members can update minutes, agendas, the calendar, the whole thing. 
Do yourself a favor right now and give them a call. Pause the video, call the number. Tell them Evan White from Reach gave you their information. Their team will provide you with a $100 discount on your initial setup costs. Next is email newsletters. If you don't have an email provider like MailChimp or Constant Contact, go back to the pre-course materials video and set something up. Having one of these services is a bare minimum in the e-newsletter game for 2020, and I suggest sending at least one email a month, preferably two or more, but we'll get there. If you are already using email as a marketing tool for your neighborhood council, it's homework time again. Questions. What is the open and click rate for your NC emails? Would you personally consider your NC emails worth forwarding to a friend? Think about it. Have you ever forwarded one of your NC emails to a friend? If the answer is no at all to any of those, we need to change that. Now here is a cute email we sent to the VNC newsletter list recently. Studies show that emojis and subject lines work. They work really well actually. So start experimenting with them along with fun subject lines. Now if you have bad open rates, I suggest you drop in some sassy subject lines into the next round of eBlast. Maybe something like the following. Cutest baby in Highland Park awards next Tuesday. Or free pizza every third Thursday of the month. Your goal here is to make the reader smile while learning about your neighborhood council. After websites and eBlasts come social media. We will touch more on this as the program progresses through the course materials here, but I want you to be thinking about your organization as a social media platform as if you're competing for attention because you really are. Now everyone is busy. We all have work and school, families, sports and music practice. All of these things also have a social media account and a list of events, fundraisers, and reasons for people to give them energy. We need to rise above that noise, be consistent, and win the attention. While you don't need to stretch yourself, your board or your committee volunteers too thin, and try to engage with every single social platform, you should be active on at least a few of them. So question, which social platforms do you already utilize? Which platforms are you really excited to learn more about? Let me know in an email or a text message or in the comments on this video, and we will add it to our next one-on-one -on -one call. In addition to social media, there are traditional media and marketing approaches like flyers for distribution, mailers, table events, swag. Here are a few questions to get you thinking about. Has your organization written a press release this month, this year? What is the last printed material that you created? Where did you distribute this piece of marketing? Do you have any swag with your logos and meeting information on them? These often overlooked marketing pieces are all part of the revival process for any organization in need of a boost. There are more materials in the assignments and resources sections below. Last on the revival train is your committee list. Question, how many active committees do you have? How many active committee members? In Venice, our neighborhood council has about 20 active committees. To have a genuinely robust group of committees, you need to imagine your board as a professional baseball team. The Dodgers franchise, for example, has five minor league teams. They watch how prospects play in all levels and move them up to the organization, hopefully to the big leagues and someday to play in the ravine. Think about your committees like the Dodgers think about the Ogden Raptors, the Great Lakes Loons, and the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes. Fill up your roster with the community members that want to have their opinions heard and build a minor league system within your community. The more outlets, committees, that are available to these people to tap into, the higher likelihood of new blood joining your organization. Now, I know we've covered a lot of materials in this first course, so I'd like you to watch it again. Take some notes, take some more notes, add to your notes, and make sure you bring all those notes to our next one-on-one. -on -one. We talked about actionable items that will drive growth. And from this, we will be creating a tailored outreach plan for your organization. My goal is to help you get the most out of reach. On our next call, we'll be talking about your customized roadmap to accomplish all of your biggest ideas for your neighborhood council outreach. The next video will be your homework video to push you along just a bit more down the road to reviving your neighborhood organization and getting your group on track for success. Keep going, you're knocking these videos out. One foot in front of the other, and you'll be in new territory reaching more people in no time. Let's reach.